Hello, everyone, and welcome to Evolutionary Church. It's February 11th, and we are well into our fourth month of growing this amazing movement, Evolutionary Church, and we're so delighted that you're a part of it. Your presence is absolutely necessary and it's welcomed and we're so delighted that you're here with us today whether you're uh, a regular that's been joining us every saturday or you're new actually if you're new go ahead and in the chat let us know that if this is your first time at evolutionary church and let us know where you're from so we can give you a huge virtual outrageously big love hug from um, the ethers of everywhere in the global evolutionary church sphere so I am Lisa Ingalls, the co-executive director of the Center for Integral Wisdom. I'm your moderator for Evolutionary Church. I'm sort of in the background taking care of things over the next hour. And again, we are so delighted to have you join us here today. We are using Zoom and we are in webinar mode. So that means that your audio and your video is off, but you do have the ability to chat. And if you're not sure how to do that, the chat is at the top of your screen and there's a little icon that says chat. If you just click on that, a panel will pop up on your right side and you will be able to chat with us. Just be sure that when you do chat that you're clicking, there's a little, you have the ability to chat to everyone or chat to panelists. Please choose chat to everyone so that everyone can be involved in the conversation and the engagement. Again, I'm going to make this announcement. I just made it. Uh, we have Sacred Retreat directly after Evolutionary Church today, and there is space still open for more participants. So I am going to be putting that link into the chat right after I sign off here, and it goes over to Barbara and Mark. And we encourage you to come if your day is open, even if it's not open, join us in Sacred Retreat. It is recorded, so you will receive the recordings of it. And um, again, I'll put the link in there. When you click the link, it'll take you directly into the, the event registration page. So finally, today's communion is being recorded and you'll receive an email uh, with the link to today's replay of Evolutionary Church. And now I'm going to do a little Dharma recap to bring us forward into our beautiful gathering today. We live in a world of outrageous pain and the only response to outrageous pain is evolutionary love. That is our Dharma Sutra of evolutionary church. And to understand uh, what it means to respond to outrageous pain with evolutionary love, we need to understand that ordinary love is a strategy of the ego. And ordinary love, as we discovered last week, always seeks to move from pain to comfort. And comfort is not, as Mark told us last week, Comfort is not the opposite of pain. Actually, comfort is a bypass to pain that keeps us from accessing the radical joy and delight that reality is longing to give us. Now, evolutionary love, on the other hand, always seeks pleasure. It knows that pleasure also necessitates some degree of pain. So evolutionary love embraces both the holy and the broken, hallelujah. It brings us home directly into the infinity of intimacy, which is our theme for today. So I invite us now to enter into the holy, the sacred space of evolutionary church as Barbara sets a resonant field for us. And I am going to hand it over to you, Barbara, now. Good morning, everyone. From the infinite intimacy, things I'm in. And Barbara, if you could turn your video on for us. Good morning, everyone. I'm in Los Angeles coming to you from the infinity of intimacy in the most extraordinary way. The infinity of intimacy needs to take an infinite 
perspective on things. Hey, hey, love, Barbara. beloved Barbara. Yes. You whisper to us the infinity of intimacy. Try and whisper it like into the microphone so it intimately I'm gets I'm talking to directly. Now we got you. Now we got you. Now we got you, love. There we go. There we go, love. I was being in the infinity. You were being intimate. You were whispering. I didn't want to. You're so precious. I didn't want to lose even one syllable. Oh, thank you, Mark. I am coming to you from the infinity of intimacy. And in order to actually experience this ourselves let us for a moment go into the infinite the infinite is an extraordinary almost impossible concept to imagine in terms of intimacy getting our perspective on it give yourself your evolutionary eye and see planet Earth as one living body from space. Feel the pain of the entire planet for one instant in time. Not only your pain and your friends and your family, but imagine the collective pain so great we stop. Feel now the spread of that deep feeling of empathy. Feeling with one another, that intimacy at the level of empathy. And breathing into how you feel when you feel with someone else, deep, deep down in you, intimately empathetic and imagine for a moment that everyone who is awake to the yearning for intimacy is feeling it together on a planetary scale as a living organism feel that empathy become radically, massively experienced together as the heart of our desire being fulfilled on a planetary scale. Because the heart's desire for intimacy is joining. Just a little louder, love. Just the everyone's right now. Yeah. For intimacy. Yeah. Joining genius. Joining genes, we create the baby through intimacy. Radical intimacy. Known as sexuality. In infinite intimacy. We join genius through empathy and love and attraction to join. What are we joining actually in radical intimacy and radical empathy? What are we joining? I believe we're joining the unique genius of each person. The unique vibrational field of that inner impulse that is expressing as you as unique. And in our church today, let every member listening in to experience that yearning in your heart for union, communion, joining to create. As in sexuality, ultimately nature's purpose is joined to create the baby whatever the lovers think. In radical, infinite intimacy and desire, our yearning is to join genius to create ourselves, our new human, our full potential, and our babies is our, our work. All of that. Together, creating the new planet. 
And so in this moment of radical intimacy and resonance, let us experience together as an evolutionary church for the very first radical planetary intimacy, joining our genius and making of our church a point of expression of planetary love now translated into the intimacy of our desire to join that leads us into what we have been calling the politics of evolutionary love at the social scale. This is our resonant field for today. And now with great joy, I ask Mark, to come in for our prayer. Oh my God, Lady B, <laughs> we are here, my friends, and there are hundreds and hundreds of us on the phone, and there are thousands and thousands of people registered and listening to the replay, and the community is gathering around the world. Oh my God. And now to the beautiful, awesome, gorgeous people in the chat box, we're making beautiful comments about technical proficiency. Amen, hallelujah, we are working on it. So when Barbara does the, um, the passing the plate, right, the donation, so put in a few hundred dollars every person, so we'll be able to have one more person helping Lisa, taking care of all the technical stuff. So that'd be awesome, and Barbara does, Barbara's such a great televangelist, oh my God. So, so we're working on kind of volume, and the right volume and all those kinds of things. And thanks for noticing Lisa was typing there and got the volume off there. Oh my God. So imagine, you know, in Castile, Spain in the medieval period, they had to work through persecution, pogrom, plague, and the black death to serve God. We, the challenged privileged, have to work through hearing a little typing while someone's talking. Get what I'm saying? Like, hey everybody, relax. We are okay. We are happening. We are alive. And yes, you're absolutely right. We want the perfect aesthetic experience for sure. But actually, right, practice is, oh my God, amen. Practice is in everything, right? right? Like all of a sudden something bothers us and we're taken out of our center, right? And then we focus completely on whatever that thing is that's bothering us. And the beauty, the gorgeousness, the joy that's happening in that moment is disappeared into the sound of someone typing on the side. That's called, and that's our introduction, right? Moving out of Barbara's intimate and beautiful resonance. And Barbara, you are beautiful this morning, right? And it's so good to see you. And hallelujah and outrageous love, everyone. That's called the missing tile syndrome, okay? So as we head into our evolutionary church on intimacy, the first thing you need for intimacy is to watch out for the missing tile syndrome. And the missing tile syndrome is very simple. You're sitting looking up and you got a thousand good tiles. And they are awesome, but you're missing one tile. One tile. A thousand gorgeous tiles. One's missing. Your eye moves to that tile. You focus on that tile. All the tiles that are there slowly recede. And all you can see is that tile. And that missing tile begins to anger you. And you begin to get upset. And then you get more upset and more upset, and everyone has their own volume on their computer, so you can actually adjust your volume up and down. Oh my God, what a miracle, right? And I'm teasing you all, because I'm laughing at all of us, right? So the nature of being full and alive and intimate with yourself is that actually you learn to not get taken out of. When I say you, I mean me. You get what I mean? When I say you, I mean me, right? I learn not to get taken out of my center. I'll tell you something wild, friends. There's a sacred text called Lady B called the scroll of Esther. And that sacred text, right, there's a story about a man named Haman, who is the second to the king. And the king is Xerxes. And it's Xerxes in the ancient kingdom, right, of Persia, where Darius was the king, right, the interlocutor and adversary of Alexander and Philip of Macedon. And the second to the king, the Mishnah Lamelech in the original Hebrew text, is called Haman. And Haman has everything. He's got actually everything. And there's just one dude in the kingdom, and that dude's name is Mordechai. And Mordechai bothers him. 
because there's something about Mordecai's eros, about Mordecai's authenticity, about Mordecai's outrageous love, whatever it is, that Haman makes him feel less. And the text reads, no matter what Haman had, all he could do was focus on Mordecai, and he had this desire to annihilate Mordecai. And the entire book, one of the 24 books of the sacred canon of the Bible, is about a person getting lost in the missing tile syndrome. All Haman can see is Mordecai, and Mordecai makes him feel less than, and so malice is aroused, and he moves to destroy. And Barbara just gave a gorgeous talk last night right, in Los Angeles, where she is now in the City of Angels, right, on the politics of attack. And the politics of attack is the opposite of the politics of intimacy. And we're here today in Evolutionary Church to talk about the politics of intimacy. Yes, and God is talking through us. And God is talking through Lisa, and God is talking through Barbara, and God is talking through Annie, and God is talking through Mark, right? And we are intimate with each other. And so as we step into Evolutionary Church at this time, right, in this place at 916, right, you know, California time, and I, I live right on the edge of the Pacific Ocean, it's about 10 feet out of my house, right, 10 feet out is the Pacific Ocean, and it's looking gorgeous, right, and I know at least some people are having volume problems, right, I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but just everyone just work with it the best we can, okay, so we are awesome, so relax on the missing tile syndrome, if there's some technical adjustment we can make next week. We promise we will make it. And I am personally delighted. I'm ecstatic. I'm beside myself at the joy and the privilege of being with all of you today and being with Lady B, right? And being right with Lisa, right? And being with Evolutionary Church and stepping into prayer. Because Barbara did resonance. I just added a little extra dharma we can use the Yiddish word, I hopped it. I grabbed in a little extra dharma on the missing tile syndrome, but being intimate with ourselves, locating ourselves in center, and not getting thrown out of center. And to be intimate with ourselves, says David, I'm grateful. To be intimate with ourselves is something like this, right? Know that inside of you, in this moment, in this time, there are 75 trillion cells, which are uniquely barber, in this very moment, right now that are dancing in a dazzling cacophony and symphony of biochemical, electrical, electromagnetic resonance, right? And neurological resonance and nerve resonance, right? And atomic resonance, right? In a dance in a cacophony of light, sound, and vibration and pulse that is no supercomputer could possibly imagine or produce. And yet it was produced as uniquely you by the cosmos, and it is happening right now in the second inside of that skin encapsulated ego, which is actually you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. 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 It's happening right now. And from that place of gratitude, my friends, we move into prayer. And we're here, Nancy, right, to evolve prayer together. We're here to evolve prayer together. And to evolve prayer together means that in evolutionary church, we're here to evolve God together because we're here to evolve religion together. And we chose together the name evolutionary church because we wanted to run into the static of the word church and to actually walk through it and to reclaim a post-postmodern vision of God. We're here to participate together in the evolution of prayer, in the evolution of God. The God you don't believe in doesn't exist. The prayer you don't believe in doesn't exist. My friend Warren Farrell likes to say, I believe in prayer. What does prayer mean? So let's do the meditation together that we do every week, and then we'll do our hymn, then we'll pray together, and we'll go into Barbara's message on intimacy. You know, when Barbara mentioned, right, in her resonance, right, Nancy, that you wanted to hear again because it was so beautiful, Barbara mentioned the relationship between the sexual, right, and intimacy. And we're going to talk about that relationship right throughout the day. But just to set the tone for it, you know, Barbara reminded me of a reading from Rumi. So I just kind of pulled the book out and pulled it out right now, right? And here it is, hallelujah. It goes like this. Rumi says, if anybody wants to know what spirit is or what God's fragrance means, lean your head towards him or her. Keep your face there close. When someone quotes the old poetic image about clouds gradually uncovering the moon, 
slowly loosen knot by knot the strings of your robe like this. If anyone wonders how Jesus raised the dead, don't try to explain the miracle. Kiss me on the lips like this, like this. So imagine, friends, right? we're in the intimate kiss, not of the sexual. The sexual models the intimate. Right? The sexual models intimacy. We're in the intimate kiss of prayer. And prayer is when we impress our lips on the lips of God. And prayer is when we know that God yearns for us. Prayer is when we know that God is not the fundamentalist, xenophobic God. Prayer is not owned by the liberals bashing Trump or by Trump bashing the liberals. Prayer is not owned by the Jews and prayer is not owned by the Christians and prayer is not owned by the Muslims because God's not a Muslim or a Jew or a Buddhist. Right? God is, we're going to talk about it all day today, God is the infinity of intimacy that knows our name. God knows what Barbara is feeling in this moment. Because I'm intimate with Barbara, I'm close to her, I can feel her feeling. But I'm just a fraction, a fractal of the divine, right? The divine feels Barbara's ecstasy from the talk last night, feels her delight from breakfast with Stephen Starr this morning, right, and with Sherry, right? God feels, right, Barbara's ecstasy and my ecstasy and feels our pain and feels our brokenness, feels our holy and our broken hallelujah. God is the personal face of the evolutionary impulse that manifested everything before any neocortex and any supercomputer, that is the love intelligence that runs through all of reality, that expresses itself uniquely as us, even as she, he holds us whenever we fall. That's the God who receives our prayer. That's the God of the holy and the broken hallelujah. And as we go into the hymn, we're here not just to say this to each other, friends. We're here to reset, to reset church in the world, to reset synagogue, to create the evolutionary spirit of a world spirituality that becomes a language that's the new meaning that binds all of us. So let's open our hearts, my friends. Let's open our hearts in ecstasy as we step into Leonard Cohen, right, the poet of evolutionary church, and he sings to us, right, Lisa of the Holy, and the broken hallelujah. The holy and the broken hallelujah. And let's love each other, my friends, and feel it out. And prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. And so let's pray now as we go to the chat box. And in the chat box, wherever it is, right, Find your chat box in the bottom of the page and let's cry out our prayers. And my prayer, I've been praying right every week and every day actually for a close friend of mine, right, to get a, a beautiful return on her mammogram. And she did. It was clear yesterday and it was ecstatic. And I'm praying for Barbara's health for so, so many years, right? Because, and we're afraid to love each other because I madly love Barbara Marks Hubbard, right? She is awesome. I can't imagine the world without her. So yes, I am praying for years and years of just holy evolutionary partnership, fucking open the Dharma, right? Putting beauty and gorgeousness into the world. And I am delighted, right, to pray for that. And everyone, right, cry it out, right? Cry out our prayers. And our prayers are first for ourselves. We can't bypass our own intimacy. And I'm asking everyone, Lisa and Barbara and myself and Philippe, everyone, go to the chat box. Don't think that someone else will do it. Let's put in our prayers. Right, right, David, right, for the fire burning in all of us and right, discovered and shared around us. Christina, healing it with mad, outrageous love. Simona, right, I pray to be able to fuck every minute of my existence open. Shot, I pray for finding my full strength. Vincenza, praying for my sister Catherine, who's having a CAT scan today to help stage to the stage of lung cancer she's at. She's strong and brave and courageous. Claire, I pray for my beloved sister that she may find peace in her heart and heal her sorrow and grief. Nahid, I pray for the state of prayer of my body. Nancy, I pray for excellent sound. Yes, Nancy. Yes, bring it to prayer. Susan Davis, I pray for the healing of tendinitis for my right thumb. Yes, Jill, I pray for fearlessness for all. Right, Jillian Hovey, I pray for my improvement in broken wrist and torn hip so I'll be able to use them for the rest of my life. Annie Stith, I'm praying for the internal strength that comes from outrageous love and intimacy. Oriana, awesome. Oriana, yes, yes. 
right? Yes, and, 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 and yes, and Mary Ann, yes, healing and prayer, my nervous system and trust, joy, Rams win state championship, letting team come to know that they are God and do all things with God and letting them know it even if they don't win. And Gare, prayers for my daughters, yes, Sarah, right, Nancy, <laughs> right, Mosa, to find my home, right, right, Colleen, prayer for every cell, right, to dance in ecstasy in my body, right, yes, amen to all, Gustavo, joy and celebration in all things, right, redundancy, red Nancy, I'm in sacred vigil with my mother, who's in transition after 97 years and three quarter years on this earth, we're with you, red Nancy, Rhoda, I pray I lose my need for others to agree with me, Naomi, prayer for Cynthia and Doug's health and friends let the prayers rise up and the gates are open now all the gates are open ellie right ellie pray it up mary jean fear field president and friends and let's pray for our president my friends right i pray for president donald trump right to know how to evolve like we all need to evolve and to be able to discern between the kind of just general self-righteous liberal hatred coming at him right which is actually painful and between the real powerful liberal critique that he needs to take into account. And don't get lost, right, in that which is wrong in the critique of you, and there's a lot that's wrong in it, right, see what's holy in it, right? So we're praying for President Trump as Barack Obama did, right, as Oprah did before President Trump came into office, and we're letting go of all demonizations, and we're praying for the highest expression of President Trump, and President Trump, we will challenge you, as a democracy should, we'll challenge you every step of the way that we disagree with you, but not in hatred, but in outrageous love, using every means right, at our disposal, right, to actually create the America, the sacred America, that we love together. I pray, Dana says, for beautiful Barbara, right, and we turn now, right, to beautiful Barbara, to take us into, take us into, amen, right, the intimacy message of today, right? What a pleasure and delight, Lady B, right? To be with you, evolutionary partner. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's enthusiasm is filled with God. You are. <laughs> Amen. Beautifully enthusiasm. It's a beautiful word. And I'd like to speak of radical intimacy and desire. Can we be heard? Can you see me? I don't see anyone now. Is it okay? We can see you. Lisa, we can see Barbara, can't we? We can see you and we can hear you. Amen. All right. So here is radical intimacy and radical fulfillment of heart's desire. Let's go the whole way in this lifetime with the fulfillment of intimacy and desire. Amen. (laughs) So I'm going to go the whole way with it. Let's first tune in, each one of us, what is your deepest, radical, at the root, heart's desire now? Let it be deep, truthful. Let it recognize that by our intention placed in our heart's desire, the impulse of evolution in every one of us, which is the heart's desire, it is the longing of evolution for more life, more love, more freedom, more greatness. This, yes to our heart's desire in the evolutionary church is turning on the unique self, the essential self in every one of us that holds the power of the billions of years of evolution encoded within it to fulfill your heart's desire at its highest level. In order for the universe, for God, to be able to fulfill that heart's desire, you need to desire it. The unique self desiring its fulfillment is the essence of evolution come alive in you and me and Barb, and Lisa, and everyone in this call. 
I'm reminded here of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs with a bit of an extension that Maslow himself did not give us. There are deficiency needs of hunger, security, loneliness. Then our heart's desire is to fulfill those needs. Then there are our growth needs to find our unique expression and creative vocation. Powerful need. And let's say at this moment, all of those needs are fulfilled. Basically, we're not hungry, starving, or in the midst of a war on this call. And most of us have found some expression of life purpose in this church. Now, Maslow had at the third level of deficiency needs, trans transcendent needs. And I'm going to translate the word transcendent to the word evolutionary needs. Beyond the very basic needs and needs for some degree of life purpose, what are the evolutionary needs of our infinite heart's desire as unique selves, expressions of the whole process of creation incarnate uniquely in every one of us on this church, in this church. And I'm just getting an image of the church being the seedbed of the evolutionary impulse of humanity taking off today. The seedbed of the joined genius of humanity's heart's desire. And what is the heart's desire at this most radical, intimate level of joining? I'll tell you what mine is, and then I'm going to ask you what yours is. My most radical, intimate heart's desire is for a degree of planetary union that could awaken our planetary body to its collective potential in love. That does not sound like an intimate heart's desire, does it? And there's a lot of intimacy included in there. In fact, everything I desire is included in there. But to express it the whole way for radical, intimate heart's desire being fulfilled, it's that expression on a planetary scale. And now I'm saying, I'm asking for that on this intimate scale of being together with all of us. So Mark, I'd like to ask people in this radical intimacy of heart's desire to say on the chat as I'm speaking, you don't have to stop for it, but let's say, can you identify if you go the whole way with it, the third level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs to the fulfillment of your evolutionary need of your unique self need in intimacy in this moment. And I've shared mine. Let's hear. I'm going to read it. My most intimate heart's desire is, oh my God, heaven on earth to be a divine human. Yes, Barbara, exclamation point. Awesome. Most intimate heart's desire. Let's allow intimate heart's desire to be God's desire. Like we've done confessions of greatness. Let's, let's now do confessions of intimate heart's desire going the whole way in this lifetime. Because if we don't desire this overtly, do you know what? God cannot fulfill it intimacy, intimately. Evolution is longing. Evolution is yearning. 
and evolution is heart's desire being fulfilled in this moment. Now let it move to actually joining genius in this church. And imagine this church being a global church, a church of all those in whom this passionate heart's desire to express unique genius exists and by the joining together it we are joining genius i am joining genius with you mark amen love amen amen i'm joining genius with you lisa and that means the frequency of my deepest impulse of creativity internally is joining and fusing with your genius, Lisa, and with your genius, Shahat, and your genius, Medea. Wow. To your genius, Sarah, to have a consistent and perpetual expression within and without of the purest unconditional love. Sarah, I join my genius with you. From Christine, that intimate heart's desire is for every man and woman and child to be lived as outrageous love. Christina, I join my genius with you. Feel it now, everybody, as you look at the panelists here, as you look at the, the chat room, we are collectively joining genius to co-create. Now, what does co-creation mean? We use that word superficially sometimes. Here's what I think it means. It means that the creator within you, expressing the unique impulse of the God force, the evolutionary, supramental genius force inside you, joining with the genius of others just on this call. Now we know the miracle of joining genes to have a baby. It's totally miraculous. Out of that sperm and egg comes the beginning in this little egg of a heart and a lung and legs and arms and it doesn't it hasn't ever seen walked or heard and it's growing in the womb from the joining of genes well what happens to us with the joining of genius if so much happens with the joining of genes to have the new baby i am declaring that for me, the joining of genius with all of you in this very instant in time is creating a new human in me. I am incredibly grown by what I'm doing right now. Does anybody else feel this? Let me hear, let me read it. Can you be intimate together with all of us and what does it feel like? Perfect. Yes, and we're reading it on the chat box, and the chat box is exploding and speaking it right now. Amen. Oh my God. Exploding right now. Amen. I feel it. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I can feel it. Yes. I'm crying. We're joined together. Yes, it feels safe. It feels good. It feels wonderful. Oh. Ah, yes. Oh, my God. So now, Mark, in conclusion, let us declare that once you join genius at this level, you are never separate again. Amen. Let us declare in the presence of the divine that our yearning to join genius in this church has created a field 
in which the heart's desire of each of the members of the church begins to pulse like that egg when it when the sperm gets it. Oh, I mean, I think this is real. Because if I can allow and feel and invite the genius of everybody on this call and everybody who will listen into this church and everybody that I know on this call and those I never have met before but know intimately because I am declaring I'm joining genius with it. And with that, Mark, I invite you <coughs> to speak your word. Mark, unmute yourself. Yeah, and moving out. Thank you, Lisa. And moving out of Barbara's most beautiful word. And we go inside each other. Friends, we live at a moment of a global action paralysis. But that global action paralysis is rooted in something deeper, Shahati. It's rooted in a global intimacy disorder. There's a global intimacy disorder. And it's not that we've lost intimacy on a global level. We've actually never had it. We've never actually evolved to that place. And as we're going to see today, evolution is no less than the evolution of intimacy. The entire evolutionary process, and this is one of the great innovative dharmic structures, mimetic structures of evolutionary church, which is evolving the source code of culture, is to understand that evolution is no less than the evolution of intimacy itself. And friends, together evolutionary church is our vehicle. Evolutionary church is not us and you. It's not Barbara and Mark and Lisa and you. Evolutionary Church is us. It's Jillian, and it's Oriana, and it's Shahat, and it's Nancy. We need to evolve together, and Evolutionary Church has got to grow every week, not because we did some marketing thing. It grows every week because Claire sends Evolutionary Church to her whole list, and Christina sends Evolutionary Church right to her whole list, just naturally. And Anna Cassell sends all of her friends and David, right, sitting there in Berkeley, my friend Deanna, right, and Sarah and Mary Jean and Vincenza, right, and Mosa, which is in Jillian and Nahid and Christine Glenn, right, and Annie Stith, right, everyone and Kathy B, right, and Gustavo and Red Nancy and Media, right. I want to really invite everyone this week, right, make that intimate commitment now, send your whole list of friends, invite them, send the link. Lisa's going to send you the link today of the replay. And send the link. Lisa, just tell us where is the link that people can send? How do they do it easily to send to everyone, to all their friends, to all our friends, right? Evolutionary Church. How do we do that, Lisa? It's The link is always in our replay email. And I'll also put it into the chat right here. Fantastic. So in the replay email that you'll get today or tomorrow, just send it out to your list. Right? Because we are together evolving the source code and the evolution of the source code that we want to talk about, and I'm checking the time, the evolution of the source code we want to talk about right this morning is the evolution of intimacy itself. And in Sacred Retreat, that's what we're going to talk about as well, because we have exiled intimacy. Right? When we think of intimacy, we think first of human intimacy. Intimacy is a human experience. That's the first exile. Only humans experience intimacy. Two... We think that intimacy means a particular kind of romantic human experience, right? Of a particular kind, right? A monogamous, classical, white picket fence, dog, right? Man, woman, that's an intimate experience. If we're liberal, we allow man, man, and woman, woman, right? If we're really liberal, we sometimes we allow three people to get together, right? But that's the limitation of our intimacy. Then we exile intimacy even more, and we see that intimate relations are sexual relations, We've completely exiled intimacy. No, it's so much deeper. So here's the sutra of the sutra of evolutionary church. It is we live in an intimate universe. Wow. Can you hear that, my friends? Right? Tweet that out right into the world, Lisa. Right? 
Lisa, how do we tweet things out into the world? How do we do that? Do we know how to do that? We live in an intimate universe. Yes, Lisa. Do we know how to do that? We know how to do that. I will put that into our replay. Um, awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. That's going to become part of this click to tweet, right? We're, we're kind of, we're in our 16th week of evolutionary church and imagine we're back in Bethlehem. We're back in Jerusalem. We're, we're, we're kind of figuring out how to do it. We're figuring out the sound by next week. I hope we're going to have to reinstate confessions of greatness. So we can really hear people's voices. We haven't worked out the sound on that because our sound system isn't quite, you know, we've got the lower end finances on our tech system because we're raising some money to upgrade evolutionary church right? But we want to actually be able to do every week confession of greatness, to hear people's intimate confessions of greatness, and to speak our voices into the noosphere. What is my unique intimate gift, right, to the evolution of intimacy? But we begin with the sutra of evolutionary church. We need to move from global intimacy disorder to a new order of intimacy, to the evolution of intimacy. And if you want to know, dear friends, why is there a global action paralysis? Because shared action only comes from shared intimacy. There's nothing more erotic than creating together. There's nothing more intimate than awakening as a unique incarnation of intimacy that we call an evolutionary church unique self. And then participating together in the unique self symphony, which is the infinite and intimate resonance of our unique voices, right, in sacred activism in order to create a genuine sacred America, which is not top down, I am the president, but bottom up, we are the people. Yes. And are we evangelists? Yes, we are evangelists, means we are bringers of the good news. And the good news is the good news of intimacy. We're past the place of the sage from the stage. We're in the place where we recognize and understand that the next Buddha, right, is a Buddha, right, and a Sangha filled with Buddhas. Not that there's no hierarchy, not that there's no leadership. There's always leadership. And yet we are all leaders and we are all evolutionary leaders because we are all offering our evolutionary intimacy into the space. But we can only do that if we do that for real, my friends. Right? The second we demonize a person, the second we create a culture of attack, the second right, we lose our empathy, the second we get lost, what Kathy Brownbeck and I talked about yesterday, we called it a failure of empathy. A failure of empathy, right? Every second in our lives, we're, we're failing in our empathy, right? And we fail in our empathy because it's too painful to open up all the way. But actually, we need to break down a little bit into break open. We got to break down the walls of our ego. We got to break down the places of being comfortably numb. We got to break down of living behind Pink Floyd's historic several decades ago wall. We got to break down living behind President Donald Trump's wall. We got to break down behind the hatred that underlies, right? The self righteousness that underlies the righteous attack, right? And critique of President Trump. But right underneath it, you feel an invective, which is an anger and a malice that no one wants to identify, right? Wow. There's not just an alt right, there's an alt left. It's not a left right issue. Let's be human beings together. Let's realize that that which unites us is so much greater than that which divides us. Let's realize that, right, wow, as Libby Roderick said to us, how can anyone ever tell you that we are anything less than beautiful? How can anyone ever tell us that we are less than whole? How can anyone fail to notice that an evolutionary church, our love is just a miracle. And how deeply we are connected in our souls. And I want to make this real, my friends, in the Dharma right now. Let's say you think that Barbara said something you didn't like. Mark said something you didn't like for a second. There was something in the residence you didn't like. So you know what? You're right. Forgive us. Who cares? Forgive us. Right? You get what we do? We hold on to the missing tile. Don't like Mark's hair. Barbara's hair is a little off. Maybe she needs new glasses. Mark, change that. Hey, friends, give it up. Let's surrender into intimacy. You get what I mean? Yes, because we want to know what love is. And Lisa, give us, give it to us, Lisa. Give us the prayer of I want to know what love is. And we'll end together with a story and an intention and an invitation from Barbara, right, to actually give and to donate. I want to know what love is, right? That's our hymn. That's our prayer. Evolutionary Church spreading to the world because it's our turn. It's our turn. Lisa, can you take us in love? Yeah. Half of it. 
Give us half. It's our prayer, my friend. It's our song. It's our prayer. Yes. Yeah, and Barbara, open our hearts, love. Open hearts into giving and into passing and into transforming. Take us in, Barbara, all the way and give us your full voice so we can hear you all the way in the heavens. Barbara, we've got to turn on, holy beloved. Turn on your holy. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me, everybody? Can you hear me, God? Can I can you hear, hear you clearly me? now, Barbara, says God. <laughs> Get away. Yes. Can you hear me, universe? Yes. Can you hear me, the impulse of evolution of 13.7 billion years of genius? Yes. Calling on you, impulse of creation. Amen. In every single human being on earth, and for one moment, let's imagine the heart's desire of everyone on earth being realized through their giving their gift through joining. Can you imagine that, Mark? Yes, 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 yes. Is that the unique self-symphony arising and actually being orchestrated by the great creating process itself? It is. It is, and so it is, beloved. And you know, I'm thinking as in the early Christian church, they were expecting the second coming of Christ. In the last two minutes, Barbara, bring us home into donation. Last two minutes honoring our sacred time structure. I, I, Amen, brother. Sister. This is not the second coming of Christ, but the first coming of humanity. <laughs> Amen. In love. So the donation of every single person donate your gift to the shift to the awakening of humanity through this church. Let us make this church become a vehicle for your fulfillment of your greatest life purpose by joining. Let this church serve humanity at this most critical crossroads between devolution and evolution by its energy, love, and creativity to make a major difference on the planet. Please give your gift to the evolution of yourself, of our community, of humanity, and possibly even of the God force itself. I cannot wait to see what you will donate today. And we will take it into our hearts, Mark and Lisa and I, so that we can 
fully upgrade our technology to reveal to each one of you your greatness. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, beloved B, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. As we close today, oh my God, right? And I'm going to just sing the chant, right, for all of us, and Lisa will open the voices, and we're 10 o'clock, and we're honoring our time structure, our holy, sacred, exploding, spontaneous emergence. Send, when you get the link today, send it to all your friends. Send it to, and ask them to pass it on to their friends. And we want Evolutionary Church to grow, not from a marketing campaign, but from the unique self-symphony that is us, sharing it with our list, with our friends, passing it on, word of mouth, growing organically, which is how it's growing to thousands and thousands and thousands of people, just without a budget just spontaneously emerging. Remember the first Rocky movie was $150,000 budget. That was it, because it was spontaneous, it was on, right? Eye of the tiger, right? So let's do it together, right? Lisa, open up our lines. Thank you, Lady B, beloved, awesome residents. Thank you, Lisa. How can anyone ever tell us that we are Barbara Ventura? Anything less than beautiful. Hey, Alex Green, how are you, brother? How can anyone ever tell us that we are less than whole? How can anyone Thank you. Brenda Hamilton, Hati, Ellie, yes. Oh my God, Alex Green, Carol, Aaron, Helma. Look, there's Helma. Yay, Helma. Helma. Yeah, Annie Stiff. Hello, Annie. Oh my Hello. God. Oh, you. God. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God. Oh, oh yes, again, Mosa. Yeah. Mosa. Yes, Mosa. Yes. 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 So good to be together. There's nothing better than that. Nothing better. Grace, uh, Grace uh, Young. Why you in the Hello Sister? Right? Awesome. Camera. So good to be with you. Right? Yeah. I'm going to yes. Ramona Vincenza. Yeah. Yes, Suzanne Schneider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pauline Walker in the green. Right, there it is. There's, there's the spelling of Pauline. Hello, hello, hello. Sandy. Sandy customer. Terry. Yo, Terry. Rosa. Rosa. Oh, my God. Where'd it go? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sharon. And there's Sandy customer. Amazing. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi. Have a good Hi. week. Hi. Holy. Amazing. Yes. Thank you all. Yes. Yes. And beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Oh, my God. I know we got to get. I know we're ready. Yes. Beauty. Norman Cohen. Yes. 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 And yes again. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Hey, Simona. 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 Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. 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 Hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you all next week. How awesome is this? How awesome is this? I am.